Well, happy Friday or TGIF or Poets or whatever day you call Friday morning to everybody. Um, Matt DeLoom taking a go at working on part two of this video of the Strickler number 227. Um, the kind of an optical delusion of a pattern. So right now I'm, you know, I the warp that I put on as you saw in the last video was all of a natural 8-2 cotylon or maybe it's 22-2. I get the, they're mixed up. They're the same size. Just whether you do it in metric or in uh, imperial sizes. So let's take a look at it. In fact, let's do something a little different. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna turn the video off for just about one minute. I'm gonna unwrap the front and kind of hold up and show you the first piece that's on here and then we'll wrap it back up and do a little bit of weaving on the second piece. The only difference is the color of the weft. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, the angles are a little funny here, but And the light's not the greatest. Maybe if I move this back this way, I don't know. Can you see that? I realize my lighting's not the greatest in this corner. I've got great light to work with because I've got them real close, but they're not back so you can get a good view. But anyways, there you go. This is kind of an orange on that natural, which is an almost a white. And then the second one I'm doing is a green. So let's wind it back on. I think I'll move the camera just a little closer so you can actually see what I'm weaving. So remember this is a two block pattern, an A block and a B block. You can see essentially there the A and B blocks. And the next, yeah, that doesn't show up real well. Well anyways, next pattern is three of the B block. That doesn't seem right. Oh, I just did three of the B block. I forgot to mark them off. One, two, three. So it's going to be two of the A block. Let's have at that one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's four threads per block. So that was for the A block. Now let's do for the B block. One. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we'll check it off on here. Now we've got a single A, a single B, and a single A. One, two, three, four, one, Whoops. Two. 
three, four, one, two, three, four, Now the easy part, boring part, I get to do 18 of the B block. We'll just start that up. One, two, three, four, I didn't, four. One, two, yeah, stupid thread got tangled. Two, three, four. Let's mark that off on the chart so I know I've done it. One, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mark it off on the chart so I know I've done it. That's enough of this for now. Next time I change colors, I'll show you uh, what the next color will be. Although right this minute, I don't know. I'm going to go through my stash of 8-2 Cotillon and see what I've got um, enough of to do the next color. I'm still just working away on this thing. It's a, it's a fairly easy weave. I mean, you've got two blocks of one in three twill, but once you get the threading all set up, the um, trebling is pretty easy. So, you just have to remember, are you setting the A block and the B block and move from one set of treadles to the other. That was a B, so now I'm going to do an A. Come 
that was an A, so now I'm going to do a B. Now back to A again. And B. Now there's going to be a bunch of beads. Another B. That one didn't look right. What did I just do? I gotta stop and figure this out. Figured it out. Sometimes if I'm not looking at the Treadles, I can move my foot over one too far and then I can almost instantly see that it doesn't look right. I gotta stop and figure out what I did wrong. That's what I did. to advance the warp. Usually when I don't have the camera on, I'd have some music on. did it again. I put my feet off by one. Pack that out. But since I've got the camera on now because you guys are watching, I don't want to get in trouble with the YouTube copyright police and have music going in the background that is not, or that has a copyright where they're going to get twisted into knots about me playing it. When I do put sound up, it's sound that I get from the YouTube library that says it's perfectly okay to use it in a video without any copyright violation. So, that's why you get to watch this with just the sound of the loom and me talking. And in the spots where I do add music, like I said, you're gonna get stuff that is not gonna be copyright issues with YouTube. Oh well, I'm going to stop the camera for now and um, show you more later. Well YouTubers, we have reached a very critical 
an important step in this whole process. I've filled up, I suppose I've got a few inches I could probably squeeze on here, but the replete of my pattern is, oh, about eight or nine inches, and I don't, there's not enough to do another full repeat. So, we're going to loosen this up a little bit. Grab one of our really important tools and here we go. Probably be easier for you to see if I did it left handed. But my ability to work up scissors left handed is extremely limited. So I'll let go of the ratchets that are holding it in place and let you see what it looks like, sort of, as I unroll it and roll it up on my knees here. So this last one is a, is a bit shorter. It's only got two of these circular parts. Um, and it's different in that I didn't have enough colored coddling to do a decent job, at least in a color that I thought would look nice. So my weft on this last one, the red weft, is just plain cotton instead of coddling. put the ratchet in place to get a little tension on here again and here we go with the scissors one more time There we have it, a roll of four full length and one two thirds length towels. Um, so the next step is to sew a hem on them. And I think I'm going to not include that in this video. I've done a couple of videos recently where I included me sitting at the sewing machine. And let's face it, I'm not great at running a sewing machine. so. I'll get that done and then show you the finished product. Well, YouTubers, I've finished this project. I decided for a change I'll do this last bit of the video outside instead of in the house. There's a lot more light out here because the sun is shining, even though there's a little bit of overcast. Um, I want to start off by showing you a piece that I made about 10 years ago when I was at um, the Vapstuga school, weaving school in Massachusetts. Vapstuga basically means weaving school in Swedish. And uh, one of the pieces we did there was 100% linen, and this is it. And I've saved it just as an example of what I did there. So you can see that it's very similar in general concept to what I've done in the project that I just finished, although not exactly the same. But I was asked um, 
on Facebook by one of the people that I keep in contact with that I took that class with, Marsha, if um, I was doing the same pattern. And it's not the same pattern, but it's quite similar. So here's the first of the towels. Let's turn it around on this side from this set. They're about 23 inches wide by almost a yard long, so I gotta really back up to show them to you. And I'm hoping that this sunlight will make them show up a little bit better. I'll do um, still pictures of each of these in addition to just hang holding them up and showing them to you. So there's my one in royal blue. Well, at the time I, I found the label for it, I, I, I had originally thought this was navy, but it's, it's called royal blue. Here's one in with an orange weft. And as you can see, the back side is exactly the opposite of the front. I think this is the one I like the color on best. And then finally I was running out of warp, so this guy is a square instead of a rectangle. The other thing that's different about this one, I was running out of um, good contrasting cotylin, so the red straight cotton instead of cotylin. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's this um, four full and one third size towels out of the oh, now the sun's getting really bright out of this um, project this is again pattern 227 out of the Strickler book of H shaft patterns and it was kind of a fun thing to do it's something I really pushed to get done in a short amount of time I wanted to see how fast I could do this it's been um, 12 days since I started this, but I've spent a fair amount of time each day, and I did take uh, one or two days off because the arthritis in my shoulder was starting to bother me going back and forth messing with the, uh, the shuttle. So I, I took a couple days off, so it means it's actually been 10 days of actual work to get this done. People, people often ask me, how long does it take to do this? Well, I didn't count the hours, but I got it done in 12 days, and I think that's um, pretty good for, for this. That's from a totally empty loom, measuring the warp, threading the loom, up through weaving, taking them off the loom, going in and sewing hems on them. So I think 10 days or 12 days is really a pretty good timing on this.
Anyways, that's it for this video. That's it for this project. I don't know what the next one's gonna be or when I'm gonna do the next video. Probably not for the next couple of weeks because we've got some other plans. But um, whenever it is, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.